Well, good afternoon and welcome back to the shop. So we are in the final stages of preparation before we can paint this car. So what have we done to this vehicle? It came in with a clear coat blue paint job. We had to strip all of that off, which took forever. Once we got all the clear coat and the base coat off, we then revealed cracks in the fiberglass. There were chunk missing, so we had to repair all of that. Once we repaired the foundation of this car and got it solid again, we had to come back and start doing body filler because there was a lot of issues. You could just feel in the body were a mess. So we fixed those. Once we did that, we then sprayed this car in 2K epoxy primer. We then came back and we sprayed this car into 2K high build primer. That high build primer, we then used a block and we used sandpaper and we sanded this surface. And what we did is we tried to flatten it out as best we could. Now from that point, we could then easily see where the problems were because we used a guide coat. A guide coat is simply a black spray paint. You put it on the car and then when you sand, all of that black spray paint should disappear. And that way there, you've got it all done. But if there's black spray paint remaining, then you know you've got dips and you've got high spots. And then with a car that's made of fiberglass, it's not like you can go underneath and hammer and dolly the body and try to get it flat. You have to either take the high spots down or you gotta build the low spots up. In this case, those high spots, if you hit glass, you can't take them down anymore or you're gonna expose the raw glass, which is a nightmare. So what do we do? We gotta fill up the low spots and we've done that for the last two months on this car is working on the body lots of sanding, lots of work. What we ended up doing then after we sprayed it and we flattened it, I came back and I refilled it because again, there was issues in the body, but now they were more obvious because of course we just blocked the car and we could see immediately where there was problems. So we've done more body work to repair those problems. Now that we've done that, I am finally going over the car with a cloth and some cleaner. And what we're doing is we're cleaning the panels and then I'm rubbing my hand or taking my hand over the surface of the panel. The reason I'm taking my hand over is because you can't see if there's a dip or an air pocket or a bubble in the um, body, but you can feel it. And over here, if you can see, I had a little couple of red marks here. And that's because as I was running my hand over, my fingers actually felt something wrong. And it ended up being, of course, when you get an air bubble in the paint or in the body filler, and then you sand half of that air bubble away, what you're left with is half an air bubble in the paint or again in the body filler. So you really don't see those because they usually fill with dust. That's the first problem. You get dirt in them, so they're flat, you don't see them. So cleaning sometimes helps, but half the time even cleaning, you can't see them. But when you rub your hand over it, like I did here, I felt them. So I hit that with, of course, I'm using the um, Everglaze Spot Putty. And this is fantastic stuff for that exact reason. It's just to fill in little air bubbles. It's not body filler. I'm not using it as a body filler. But basically I apply it. I can then come back with the sandpaper. And what I'm doing with the sandpaper is I'm still using a block because I don't want to create any divots here. But by taking the sandpaper over it, you want to remove 99.9% .9 of that red dust and all you'll be left with is a red dot. But that red dot is where the red um, filler has gone into the air bubble and then you're removing everything else off of around it. And again, what you'll end up with is nothing more than a red dot. And then we're done. So I'm going to now continue doing this. Probably go around the body once or twice because you always miss something. Again, Wipe it down, take the hand over it, see if you feel anything wrong with it. And if not, you continue on. And then once we're done it, we're gonna wipe it again, then we'll tack it. And then we're gonna shoot this now in 2K high build primer one last time. And once we've shot all the panels again in the 2K, a couple of coats, we're gonna come back with 600 grit paper because now we're not trying to flatten the car, the car is flat. What we wanna do now is take the 600 and even out all of the um, primer and also make it so that there's not huge scratch marks in it because when we lay the paint down on this car I want that paint to be sitting on a nice smooth surface and that'll be reflective of the paint uh, once we're done with the clear coat. Anyways that was it for today's channel. 
I'm hoping it is 3.30 in the afternoon. I'm hoping maybe by 4.30 I'll put a couple of coats of primer on this thing for the night and call it a day. But anyways, if I do, I'll record it. If not, this will be the end of it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, and I'll see you next time. Well, the good news, the car is in primer. I was able to get the car painted. The bad news, I didn't put a filter when I poured the paint. I, I don't know why I didn't. It's one of those things where sometimes, you know, you think you know what you're doing and you just forget. There's a lot of solids in high build primer. And although I stirred and mixed and shook and did everything I could, I guess when you start getting near the bottom of the can, because we've gone through a whole gallon of this, remember we put three coats on this car originally that cut it all down to probably one or two. And then we just now put another couple of coats on. When you get near the bottom of the can, those solids, I guess, were a little thicker than I thought. And without straining the paint, I put it into my DeMilvis. I came up here, I pulled the trigger, and I barely got four seconds out of the gun before one of those globs obviously got into the gun and it shut the gun down. Now, I got obviously a mixed hardener with a 2K primer, and I have a gun that's dead. So what do I do? Well, luckily I have my second backup gun. Now that second backup gun has a 1.3 tip, the developers is a 1.7. So now when you're shooting a heavy solid like this with a high build paint, that 1.7 gives you a nice seven inch fan, you get that nice cut. With the other gun, I had barely a four inch fan. I tried to open it up a little bit more air pressure, couldn't do it. Remember, this is a heavy, heavy um, uh, solid paint. So the good news, I didn't use my strainer. I moved the paint from my DeBilvis into the new, the other gun. I was able to finish off all the panels. I then went back, mixed up a new batch, this time using a filter in the same 1.3 tip gun, and I sprayed the car. So I was able to get it all done, everything's done. So that's the good news. But like I said, I then had to clean both guns yet again and put them away. So now at least they're ready to go when we're ready to paint this car. Now, what do we do next? Well, we're gonna get that 600 grit paper and we are gonna literally flatten this paint to 600 grit. And then once we're down to that, we're gonna clean this shop. We have to clean this like you won't believe because even though primer is forgiving, you know, a little bit of dust in the air, the clear coat is not forgiving. I mean, that will fish eye on you and any crap on this car. So we're gonna have to do a good job of cleaning the garage up. But until then, hope you enjoyed the video and the update. If you did, I hope you hit that like button and I'll see you again.